Hello, welcome to a new series I'm going to be doing about programming, specifically in Python. Python is a really simple programming language. It's very popular in schools. It's very popular for beginners to start programming. It's accessible, it's free, and there are tons of resources out there on the internet uh, if you'd like to follow a variety of other tutorials. Python's actually been around since the 1980s, so although it seems to have just recently uh, become really popular within schools, it's not a new programming language. It has a heritage, it has been around, um, and therefore there are plenty of resources for those who are looking to uh, either get to grips with programming, get to grips with Python, or to integrate Python into the classroom. So this series of tutorials, which I'm going to be doing, is going to start right back at the beginning, uh, how to get started with Python, uh, including how to get it installed on your computer. And then I'm going to take you through, week by week, a set of lessons which will help you to understand a little bit more, not just about Python, but also about programming in general. Many of the features, many of the tools that we use in programming apply across all programming languages. So by learning Python, and by learning uh, how to code in Python, you'll actually find that it becomes easier when you look at a different programming language um, because you'll already understand the way in which we create algorithms, create code, create structures. So let's first of all look at the two things we need to do before we can start programming in Python. And the first is to go to this website here, which is simply python.org. Python.org is where you can download the programming language itself. This allows your computer to then understand Python code that you create and convert that code into a code or a language that the computer actually understands. Computer doesn't actually understand Python. Python's a language that we use and then the computer has to convert that programming language of Python into something else that it does understand. Uh, so first of all, uh, we need to download the language so that the computer then has access to all of the, the structures uh, and tools that we're going to be using. And to do that, just go to python.org, go to the downloads section here, and then of course, depending on whether you're using Windows or Mac OS, um, you'll need to download the appropriate one. I'm using Windows, so within Windows, you've got two versions of Python. You've got Python 3.5.1 and Python 2.7.11, or basically, as people tend to refer it, 3.5 or 2.7. Um, I'm using 3.5. You'll find that uh, most of the resources out there are starting to use 3.5. Uh, schools that are just starting to get used to the idea of computer science and introducing programming languages uh, tend to be going for 3.5, but although there are differences between them, it's not going to make a world of difference at this stage. But I'm going to be using Python 3 if that makes any difference to you. So you'll install Python, first of all, just download it, install it, that won't take very long at all. Uh, but then how do you actually write it? This website allows you to get the language onto your computer so that your computer can understand the code, but we need a tool uh, what we call a developer uh, environment that allows us to type the code in um, and preferably to see things such as, as you can see in these little uh, boxes here, um, formatted code, so color coded code. Um, this is a personal choice. You, there are lots of developer environments around for Python. Um, the one I'm going to be using is the PyCharm Community Edition. Now, the reason I'm using this is because it is entirely free, it's completely free, um, and it does everything that we need it to do at this stage. Uh, personally, I tend to use uh, Komodo uh, because that's a, it's actually a paid version that I use, and that 
just has a few extra tools. But to get started, there is absolutely no need whatsoever to start paying money for anything. So um, although there are plenty of developer environments for Python, the most popular uh, with most people is PyCharm. So just simply go to, uh, we'll just Google PyCharm or go to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. And again, depending on whether you're using a Mac, Windows or Linux, uh, you can download this. Uh, by all means, try the professional. Uh, you do get a 30-day free trial with that, after which it's going to cost you, um, if you do the, um, I think it's one of the licenses, the cheapest license they do works out at about £89 per year. Um, but uh, the community edition, as I say, is entirely free and it will do everything that we needed to do. And for most schools, it's perfectly adequate. So go ahead and go to python.org, download your Python, then go to PyCharm um, and download your community edition. Install that. It's a very simple install. Uh, once you've installed it and you run it, It'll just ask you a couple of questions, such as uh, where you want to save all your programs. It'll suggest um, a PyCharms folder within your username folder. That's usually absolutely fine. Um, it'll also want to know where your interpreter is, and it'll usually pick up on it. But basically, your interpreter is what this is here from python.org. So you'll download this, um, and then when you install PyCharm, it should identify that you've installed the interpreter from python.org. Um, if you've installed any others, then you'll have a choice. But in most situations, that's just simply a case of clicking next and OK. Uh, once you have got as far as installing PyCharm, and your Python code, of course, is also um, installed, then this is the window that you will see. So at this stage, we're going to uh, create a new project, go to File, New Project. Um, decide what we're going to call it. Um, I'm going to put in um, TT demo and then click on create. Here's the interpreter as I mentioned here. Um, I only have that one interpreter. It's the one that I downloaded from python.org. And in fact, actually, I thought I had 3.5. I clearly don't. I've got version 2.7. Uh, so my apologies there. It doesn't make a lot of difference, uh, to be honest. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I've got version 2.7 instead. There we are. So. There we are, I was wrong. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll click Create. Um, we'll open it in the current window, that's fine. And once we have created our project, we need to insert a file that we can type into. So we'll go to File and New, and then it'll ask us what sort of new thing is it. Uh, you can just simply click on File here, and let's give it a, a new file name, we'll call it um, my first code. Click OK. And it'll say to us here, um, well, it looks quite confusing, but actually just simply saying, what programming language are you going to be using? Because PyCharm doesn't necessarily just have to be used with Python. So what we'll do is scroll up a little bit, and then we'll find Python is listed in here. So we can click on Python to say we're going to be making a new Python file. So we click on Python, click OK, and here we are. We've now got a window in which we can type away and we can start typing Python code. Now I think one of the most traditional programs for anyone to start coding when they begin any programming language at all is what we tend to call the Hello World program. Hello World simply displays those words, Hello World, on the screen somehow. So within uh, Python and within most programming languages, there's a simple word that means display the following words. Display them on the screen somehow. And that word is print. Seems a little odd because we're not actually printing it to a printer, we're printing it to the screen. Uh, but the word print will allow us to display whatever it might be. And in this case, we're just going to display the words, hello world. <clears throat> now, print is a command word. It's a word that Python understands. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it understands that as an instruction. It's an instruction word or a command word. So that's fine, just written as it is. But 
the words hello world they're not instructions they're not commands they're just simply words we want it to display so we can't just write them out like this hello world that would create an error and we can see that it's created an error because it's underlined in red this is the benefit or one of the benefits of using um, a program a developer environment such as um, PyCharm to create your code because you will find that it will uh, color code your your uh, text so that you can see immediately if you've made a mistake if you've made a typing mistake or a coding error and it'll also prompt you or suggest what you're about to type um, and I'll show you an example of that in, in a moment so as we can't simply write these words out because they're not command words they're not words that the computer understands in order to tell the computer this is just simply you know some some random words ignore this just just display this on the screen just put it on the screen but don't worry about what it actually says so we simply open up speech marks now what you'll notice is I've opened up speech marks but it's actually put me an opening and a closing speech marks which means I can type away and whatever I type is automatically enclosed within those two speech marks. Of course I can get rid of the second one, type something, uh, it'll obviously show me that there's an error here so I can then manually put in that second speech mark and immediately we can see that the red line disappears. So let's put in there, hello world. There we are. Making sure that our speech marks are closed. And that's it. That's our first line of programming code in Python. So print and a space. And then in speech marks, hello world. Now, having written our code, how are we going to run it? Well, within PyCharm, and this does vary depending on which program you use, but if you are a complete uh, beginner, then it might be worth you using PyCharm just because then you know everything is going to look pretty much exactly the same. So in PyCharm, the simplest way of running code is to simply right click anywhere within this code window here and then just uh, find this option here halfway down. It has a little green triangle next to it, like a, a play button, and just simply click on that to run your program. You'll see there's also a keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, and then uh, an F10. But to be honest, I think that right-clicking and choosing that is, is probably much easier. So what happens when I do click that? Well, what happens is we have a little, uh, little um, window open up at the bottom of PyCharm. And you can see the first line here is just simply the... Uh, name and location of the script or a bit of code that we've written and underneath that whatever we have outputted whatever we have produced as a result of our code and you can see that our code has produced this little bit of text hello world so the computer has carried out the instruction of print or display something and it has just simply displayed what's in here now, of course, I can change the text in here. So I could type in here something like, um, please visit www.thetechtrain.co.uk. So again, if I was to right click within this code window and then go down to the green triangle, run my first code, the code window at the bottom now updates so uh, we don't get a second one it updates to show whatever it is that this code I've written up here is asking the computer to do so again the first line simply shows us the file that we're running after that is all of the output everything that's produced by our program in this case it's the text please visit and then a website and then of course at the bottom it just simply says that uh, the program is finished that's it um, so that is your very first, perhaps, computer programming um, program. So if you've never coded before, then just get Python installed at python.org, the Python interpreter. Um, download PyCharm, uh, the community edition, completely free, install that. Then just create a new project and a new file, make sure it's a Python file. 
type that in and run it. And if you've never coded before, then congratulations, you will have just produced your first computer program. Now that's obviously pretty simple. We're going to look at uh, something called variables in a moment, um, but we'll do that in the next video. So um, I'll record the, uh, the next video in a moment. But I'll stagger these, and what I'm going to be doing is releasing one of these each week. So if you'd like to follow this uh, series of videos, um, then the best thing of all would be to hit that subscribe button. So if you go to subscribe, click on that, and then you will um, obviously be notified whenever a new one of these is published. Um, alternatively, of course, you can bookmark the techtrain.co.uk, and there will be a series of Python videos listed on there as they come out onto YouTube. So thank you very much indeed for watching. If you have any questions, uh, or any comments or suggestions, or any problems at all with getting Python to work, please do leave them in the comments section below. I do read all comments. I do try and respond to comments. Uh, this is not so much a, a tutorial video. I want to think of it more as a, as a lesson so you're able to discuss any issues or questions you have and I'll respond either in the comments section or in the next video and, and make sure that these videos are helping you to make that progress. So again, thank you very much indeed for watching. Um, I hope that you'll stick with us and good luck with getting your first Python code up and running.